I just expected any moment for her to call me because that's what she did, but she didn't. I was confused at first what building it was, um, where she was. I just was very um, disoriented. My name is Lisa Cardinale. I live here in Long Branch. I lost my mom that day. The phone calls were going through, so I, I just expected any moment for her to call me because that's what she did but she didn't. My name is Jacob Campbell. Uh, when I was 10 months old, I lost my mother, Jill Campbell, in the South Tower of the World Trade Center. My mom had actually just come back from maternity leave. She had, at the last minute, swapped shifts with a coworker for that morning so that she could be home in the afternoon. We got a call on the answering machine after the first tower was struck. Uh, she said that they weren't sure what was going on, she was going to stay put and that everything would be okay and that was the last that we heard from her. I tried to go into the city to try to, uh, hoping to find her. My brother ran down there and I always regret I was yelling at him to, to, to go get her and to do something. and. He, used to say, he just kept telling me that there was nothing he can do. And I guess I obviously did not understand the magnitude of what was going on. And honestly, it took, it took months to months to really wrap my head around that she wasn't coming home. So, I'm here on our campus. Um, I was maybe eight or nine years old um, at the time. I remember seeing something on television where someone had mentioned, you know how kind of in the old timey movies, they go like father, you know, like with the kids who look almost like butlers. And I asked my mom, I was just like, you know, like, why don't we say that over here? You know, just why is there that difference? Um, and then she's just like, well, you know, the dad that you know, because at the time my mother had remarried, he is not actually your father. My mother tells me all the time how much I look like him. But also my mom always said like, you know, if you have any questions, you know, feel like, because it's, you know, as much as some as it's something that's very emotional for me, it's still something I would like to tell you. And being someone who didn't live, didn't see, didn't, and still doesn't fully comprehend, you know, what had happened that day, I still don't really have very many good questions to ask her. But within the past year, I've been able to have much more, uh, much better, much more in-depth conversations about what had happened. I've always felt kind of different from the rest of the kids. I was raised by my grandparents. They did their best. I had a really normal childhood given the circumstances, but I remember noticing how much older they were on my first day of kindergarten and just all the other parents were kind of young, happy families and I was there with my grandparents and it wasn't a bad thing, but it was just kind of the first time I had realized that things were a little different for me. She was very gregarious, very vibrant lady. Uh, she loved her family. She loved to travel. When she graduated from high school and college, she did backpacking trips in Europe. She went to Japan, Australia, and she just kind of made friends everywhere she went. And 
my grandpa made sure that she was a Mets fan and then when it came time for him to raise me, he made sure I was a Mets fan. So definitely I think that's, that's a source of connection for me because I know if she were here, that's where she'd be taking me to. Twenty years later, I'm not over it. I never got over it. But I did have kids and I was very, I don't want to say envious, but everyone had their moms and I was kind of, I was alone. So I had an idea with it. I don't know, I'm still dealing with it <laughs> 20 years later. I want people to know it didn't end that day. We are still suffering. It has affected everything in my life and my children's life and all the family's life. It didn't, it didn't end that day. We always say never forget 9-11, but from the stories that my mother has told me of the support that she received after 9-11, I, like, I would also like to never forget what happened in 9-12 and 9-13. I'd like to kind of bring that sense of unity back. Maybe not in a year, maybe not in two years, but you know, we've got a lot of challenges facing us in the next five, 10 years with climate change and war. So much about our world that we live in now is as a result of what happened. So that's one way I think that we need to commemorate it. It gives you just a moment to step back and look at what's really important and kind of step above the nonsense that you are distracted by in your day-to-day -day life and just kind of think about the people and the things that are really important to you when it all comes down to it. <laughs>